if you're looking out to build out an entire software with absolutely no code, this is the video for you. No, I'm not going to be suggesting you create this software with no code platforms like Bubble. This video right here is going to give you actually real information when it comes to this industry. This piece of software you see behind me is a software I've created completely from zero lines of code to 25,000 lines of code. So I'm going to give you my experience from this industry, my perspective, and everything you need to know if you want to create a software like this with no code. Welcome back, y'all. In today's video, I am making it because I made a video two days ago, if I can scroll down here real quick, which basically goes over the reasons why you don't want to use a no code tool like Bubble to create software. You can go in and check that out. I'm going to leave a annotation card up there as well. I talk about a lot of the drawbacks, but some of the responses I got from that video was like, hey, I understand what you were saying when it comes to learning how to code and proceeding in that manner, but some of our opportunity costs involves us not wanting to learn how to code. Therefore, what is the best way to go down the route to build software and still not know how to code? There is a way to do this. It's a little bit lengthy, as you see here. And what we're gonna be doing in today's video is I'm gonna be dragging off every single one of these boxes and going into great detail, everything you need to know when it comes to the whole process of building software. You're gonna get insider information from an actual full stack developer so you're not left in the dark when dealing with developers and not being overcharged, longer timelines, and everything of this nature. So make sure you subscribe if you don't haven't already. Make sure to like completely free. Follow me on Twitter, the description down below, and let's jump into today's video. So to begin, we have a nice little chart here that I created before the video. Yes, I prepped before this video a little bit, and we're gonna start with box one. So what is behind box one? Capital. Capital. What do you mean, Corbin? So in this video, if you actually want to get into the industry, I'm going to be very real with you and you don't want to learn how to code, you only have one other viable option that can actually give you high return long term. And that's going to be you need money to invest in building the software. I go over plenty of reasons why you don't want to do no code tools, which you can check out up there as a prerequisite to everything I'm about to describe here. Before we dive into these steps, make sure to have some type of an MVP. You don't, it's not a necessary step. These MVPs can be created on stuff like Bubble and Zapier just to show the developer that you'll be communicating with a general direction slash general idea of how you want the software to operate comparative to you just providing a Google Doc that's like very ambiguous when it comes to paragraphs of like what is incurring. It's, it's better to be more clear. So using no code tools to create minimum viable products has its standing. Put that out of the way. Now let's jump into box one here, which is capital. How much money do we need to raise? How should we structure pricing for this contract and everything of this nature? Last disclaimer here, none of the thing, none of the, if I can speak, everything I'm about to say in this video is not legal advice. It's not financial advice. It is completely from my opinion as a full stack developer in the industry of software. Okay, enough talking, let's jump in. So when I refer to capital in this context, I am talking about money. How much money is probably required and how much money should we not waste? So before we even dive into that, the first thing is how are we structuring our plan here? You got two options. Are we going by the hour or are we going by fix? Hour is basically however many hours it takes you to complete the software, I'm paying you that much. Is it $150 an hour, $200 an hour, $30 an hour, $50 an hour, fix? For this entire project, for the end product of what I'm requesting for the software, how much are you willing to pay? 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000. Those are the two ways to approach this. Both have their drawbacks, both have their advantages. What I will say is that you probably want to lean towards fix, but fix with very, very clear dictation of what you're looking for. If you go the route of doing a fix contract where I'm paying you $40,000 for this piece of software, be very clear on what you want. And you don't want to pivot halfway through development. That's going to just mess everything up. If you want more flexibility during development, proceed with hourly. What do I mean by flexibility? I mean that two months into the development process, you actually want to pivot the underlying value point to the software or what the software does. You're going to have to go towards hourly. Because what we need to understand is that with fixed cost, day dot to day completion, the software you're proposing to be created is associated with that fixed cost. Any type of nuance, any type of addition, et cetera, that should be an additional fee. So if you will fixed cost, that means you have a very, very secure idea of what you want to do and how you want to do it. If you go off hourly, that means that you have like a 70% idea of what you want to do and how you want to proceed. Keep that in mind. Money-wise, how much you should start with, 
really depends. If you want to build up this software and proceed post the actual software application being ready to go and you're getting users, there is going to be a lot of sunken cost here because of the fact that user acquisition is going to cost some money and everything of this nature. I wouldn't comfortably start the idea of starting to build out a software with a, at least a minimum of 15 to 20,000 minimum. That is like bare minimum. You will have to build up some capital because you're paying for high expertise skills here. That leaves out box one slash box two. Let's see. Let's see. Legal. Okay. You already got the disclaimer. Here's everything we need to know when it comes to the contract. So we're going to have a nice piece of paper here. But there's also going to be a lot of onboarding processes, a lot of discussions. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on before this thing even gets rolling, even the ball gets before it even gets kicked. So what needs to be encompassed here? First thing that needs to be encompassed here is going to be clear guidelines. So you're not going to be downloading this off of some free PDF website. I would suggest to use something like LegalZoom. It's probably going to be your most LegalZoom or maybe a, a local attorney. Whatever you want to do, just cost it out. Whatever is best for you. But you want to clear guidelines. Because if you're communicating with a dev team or communicating with a developer and they say they can do it in three months, hold them to it. Put it in the contract. If it's not done in three months, every month additional to that, either it's a cheaper, I don't pay as much, or I get a full refund. This isn't wishy-washy, this isn't ambiguous, and in the day, you're putting money on the line. If you're putting money on the line, have clear guidelines on deadlines. This is a no-joke area, as a lot of areas or a lot of situations that happen in this industry is people don't create clear deadlines, therefore, they're just burning money. Burn, burn, burn. We don't want to burn money. Therefore, have clear deadlines and implications if those deadlines are not met. If the developer is not comfortable with that, get a new developer. That's just how it goes. So after that, there's a thing called an NDA. So this is kind of during the acquisition process. It's going to be a one-page, two-page, three-page thing. But at any time, any day, you're going to present someone with the idea of your software before they're even onboarded to your team slash in the development process, have them sign this. Because this is when you're basically divulging into the idea itself slash providing the MVP. Therefore, the developer can't actually steal it because they're binded by this NDA. What's great about this is that this isn't a one-off paper. You can use it multiple times with multiple people, depending on your context. There's going to be more stuff we add to this later on in these blocks we take off. But finally, a very important part as well is having the post delivery phase. What does that mean? What are the implications? Does this mean that once the developer gives you the software, they have zero rights to it, to zero proprietary information? This is important to identify and outline. This isn't a generic piece of paper here as this is very specific because you don't want to be undercut in future times. So we're going to be coming back to this one, but for now, we'll slash it. Okay, on to box three. Box three, drum roll please. Boom. Dev jargon. You probably heard of legal jargon before. Here's dev jargon. You need to have some level of comprehension on words and terminologies used in the software industry. This doesn't mean you need to know how to code. But this does mean you need to understand to some competency what's incurring within the software. Here is a real quick lesson on dev jargon. We're going to do two branches here. Also, as a side note, you can go and check out that video that shows you all the tools and softwares needed to build a software. Doesn't mean you have to actually use the tools, but you can just kind of understand, okay, this does this, this does that. This right here is just going to be a real quick lesson on what you need to care about be two main types of developers. And then there's one, and then there's like a third type that does both of these. They're called full stack. First type is going to be a front end engineer. Front end is basically what you're viewing right now. This entire whiteboard software, this is the front end. The other one is called a back end engineer. Back end engineers are the ones where basically by me clicking and dragging, they're causing some type of code to incur. This is when I click a button what's happening in the cloud. Now, sometimes front end, you can do some of these calls within the front end, but basically very complex stuff. Like for example, me signing into a software, that's gonna be back end. Back end and front end, they communicate with each other. How do they communicate with each other? They're just basically telling each other what's incurring here. So when I click sign in, which is a front end element, it's telling the back end basically, hey, this person's trying to sign in and then it runs all this stuff in the cloud. So what is the cloud code? Why do you keep bringing up the cloud? This is just important dev jargon to understand. The cloud is, think of it like if your computer is off, it can still op your software can still operate because it's in some hard drives and 
Nebraska or something like that. Basically, this is where your functions are run and you pay money for this. So the cloud here, what are some examples of cloud providers? We got Firebase or Google Clouds. And then one you've probably heard of is AWS. So these are different cloud providers. This allows your software to run 24 seven, seven days of the week, run it in Germany, run it to the UK, run it to Singapore, wherever it may be. This allows it to run automatically. And this is probably, probably why the reason that partly why the reason you're even here is because that's why you love software. It's inherently scalable. Anyone in the world can use it. You might be, I might've lost you a little there. All you need to care about is this. What is the, what is the points that you need to take from this entire talk? when it comes to dev jargon, the front end engineer and the back end engineer, or alternatively a full stack engineer is what you're looking for. I, I can't even write that out. <laughs> full stack engineer, identifying this. Now we know the type of developer we're looking for. Depending on the type of product you're creating, type of software idea, whatever may be AWS, Firebase, there may be different reasons why you would choose each one. Each one, I would suggest you check out that video as I go into the reason why I chose personally Firebase and cloud functions of the software I'm building. With the development of your team and how you want to structure your team, I would encourage you to get one back-end engineer, one front-end engineer. I would stray away from just doing one developer that's a full-stack developer. The reason why, unless your software is extremely simple, is this is going to delay timelines by a lot. And the reason I say that is because of the fact that, think about it, it's one person doing all the code comparative to two people that can always check their code and ask each other for advice. Even if this individual has ChatGBT on their side, it's still going to take a longer time. I did develop my software for the last five months as a full stack engineer. But as of recently, I'm working towards getting a, another engineer on my team to help expedite processes. It's just part of the flow. It's just part of the journey when it comes to creating software. Next, we have team. So I kind of already went over this a little bit. When it comes to dev jargon, I just encourage you to understand just the foundational levels of what is a front end. Popular programs, React, what is a back end? Popular programs, Firebase. I encourage you to check out this playlist at the end here, which just goes from concept to software. You can kind of get a better idea of everything incurred there. I even show you a video of why softwares make so much money because of the fact that actually storing and handling data is very, very cheap when handling it at scale. How do we structure our team? For team, you have two options here. Are you going to be involved in this or do you wanna outsource this? What do I mean by that? Both ways on a service level are the same, but one way is you are more, you are more holding the reins per se. One way is you just hire a standard agency and this agency kind of already has everything structured. Sign this contract. Oh, we'll handle this. Oh, we'll do this. Just give us money and we'll provide you with an end product. So in this route and this logic, your input is very limited, but you basically don't have to do much. You just throw down the money and they'll handle the rest. If you want to go that route, I suggest agency. The alternative route requires you to actually put in some more time into it. So it really comes down to how, how much you care or how much money you have to expend. If you've got some money to burn and you want to take possible drawbacks of doing an agency, proceed. If you want to get really involved in this, not really involved in this, but in the sense that like basically in the software industry, industry we call them PMs, project manager. If you want to become a project manager of your project, then this route, I would suggest you to do this. You're going to get comfortable with a software called Jira. You're going to get comfortable with a software called Slack. I might need to make a video on this. Let me know if you want, are interested in a video like this to show you how you would structure and communicate for team. What is Jira? Jira is a way for you to organize deadlines, way for you to organize. It basically gives you insight of what's incurring for that specific day. And you aren't just in an email chain and you're just like, hey, any updates? No, no, no. Jira tells you. Jira has a whole backlog, everything associated with that. Let me know if you want to see that video. Slack, if you don't familiar with that, you probably are familiar with that. This is how you communicate with your team. You have channels dedicated for specific things. In this context, I would encourage you to put up the money to have two engineers. Where do you find those engineers? Upwork, freelance sites, stuff of this nature. This is going to require you to do some communication. This is going to require you to probably jump in a call with all both engineers and you. This is going to require a little bit more of your time. As I said, comparative to this option, this is like you're very much learning a lot about it and you're doing more about it, which is not a bad thing. I, if you had to choose two, if I had no coding experience, I would choose this one. 
this one's going to give me like more insight as I scale. And if it does become a successful software, what to do? You have one front, one back, one individual completely dedicated to the front end, one ind individual completely dedicated to the back end. These individuals meet, communicate, and proceed in that manner. What I would do in this context is I would be very transparent of how much you're paying each one, if not having both in the same contract that is signed, because you don't want one to just spill the beans and be like, wait, you're only getting paid this much? Wait, I'm getting paid this much. This is, this, that, that's bad team synergy. So you're gonna probably pay both the same amount. Proceeding from there, this is how you're gonna structure your team. So I may need you a more full in-depth video on this so you can actually understand how to communicate in this logic. I'm just gonna jump to the last block here. The last block here, which is probably gonna be, oh, I need to slash these. The last block here, which is probably gonna be a very interesting block. Also, side note, is there any other YouTube that's putting this kind of content out? Let me know. Because a lot of business content seems to be structured around other types of stuff. Rarely do I see any type of content like this or education like this for software development. It almost feels like this is a untouched field, which is like, really ironic because software is probably the most advantageous business to start because it's like exponential income. Side note, the last block is this, content of logic. What does that mean? Let's find out. As I said, we're gonna come back to that contract. We need content. No, 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 I'm not talking about the developers are now making YouTube channels, no, 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 no. This is what I'm talking about. When you create software, you're gonna have a back end and a front end, as I said before, and in the back end and front end, you're going to have files. So let's just split this up like this and we're going to say these are back-end files each file does a different thing these are front-end files for example maybe this file is for the home page this is how the home page looks on the front end and it's just a code file um, side note as well back-end engineer should be python proficient front-end engineer react proficient html css javascript whatever it may be each one of these has a file each file does a certain function what you need to do, what you need to outline within that contract is that the deliverable product gives you either one, depending on how you want to do it. Personally, I like video. Maybe you want notes, but gives you for every single one of these files, I'm going to go with video just because I like videos. And you're watching this, so you probably like videos too. Every single one of these files, give me a 30 second video describing what that file is doing. Not in the sense of like, hey, this line of code does this. No, 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 no. I don't care what the code does. Tell me what it does operationally on the service level. So, oh, Corbin, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here is your 30 second video for the home JS. The purpose of this file is to build out your front end showing your home page design. Maybe it's a 15 second video, maybe it's a 30 second video, maybe it's a minute video for more complex files. You're gonna create a whole composition of this, a whole catalog of this. And the reason why is for two major reasons. You've already put down the money to build it out, therefore, watching 30 second to minute clips of files just to understand, okay, this file does this in a layman way is advantageous to you so you can actually understand how to a surface level, how it communicates with each other. Numero uno or numero dos is if you hire engineers that aren't the engineers that originally created the software, so maybe you have a different engineer that you actually put on a W2, XYZ, they are going to have to come into that software and be like, what the heck do all these files do? They're going to have to go to every single one, read the code, see if there's comments, et cetera. But if you give that engineer that Google Drive folder with all that catalog of videos, you say, just watch these videos so you can get a comprehension of every single file, what it does. You just saved yourself three weeks of time and three weeks of pay of that new engineer. So for that, give me a like, it's free. <laughs> So that just about does it. We obviously could dive a lot deeper into every single one of these blocks, more specifically, probably the dev jargon and the team building. That's probably the most important out of all these past everything else once you get the ball rolling. So maybe I need to do a video of like, once the ball is rolling, how do we proceed? Because that is a whole nother thing. If you don't go the agency route, that's it. Now, if you're approaching this by doing it with no code, this is gonna be your best possible route. Alternatively, if you're doing it with code, you can check out that video that I referred at the very beginning so you can get insight of the perks of doing it with code and everything in that manner. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. That is the playlist I was referring to. Even if you don't wanna learn how to code, it is a very advantageous playlist because it gives you perspective on why software is so advantageous, but also like use cases within my own software of like, holy smokes, like make sure you're doing this, which you can kind of relate to your developer. That's a random video, that's my face. I'll see you in the next video.